Hello, my name is Natalie Doming, and I'm the Financial Literacy Program Coordinator at Atwater Library. The Atwater Library Financial Literacy Program is made possible through funding uh, by a grant from Canadian Heritage. Today I'm joined uh, with analyst for the um, for l'Autorité des Marchés Financiers, Michel Garriapi. Hello, Michel. Hello, well said. <laughs> and I've asked Michel here to, uh, because he's a regular over at uh, our library for these presentations, and I've asked him here to share some valuable, valuable information about how to prevent financial fraud um, in his presentation entitled COVID-19, Watch Out for Financial Fraud, which is um, really good tips for, especially in this current climate, but also this information is really valuable anytime to safeguard against financial fraud. So please welcome Michel Garriette. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks to Natalie. Thanks to the Atwater Library to, for having me. Uh, some of you may have seen me a few times. I, I think the, uh, the most conferences, the, the place I've been the most frequently to is probably the Atwater Library. Always a great pleasure to go there. Uh, very lively audience, uh, very good questions. Uh, and hopefully when all this, is, this crisis is over and done, because there will be an end to it, uh, we'll be able to see each other again uh, physically and a little more closely than actually so. But now in the current situation, this is what we have, a nice webinar for you on fraud uh, during this, this COVID-19 uh, crisis. Uh, today's topics, I'll talk briefly uh, about the AMF, my employer. I'll give you steps to avoid financial fraud. Those steps you can use during a crisis time or any other time. Uh, I'll give you signs that unfortunately you're probably getting scammed and I'll share with you a few COVID-19 uh, related scams, the things that have come up to our attention at the AMF and elsewhere in Canada and the, and the world. Uh, the Autorité des Marchés Financiers is the body that regulates financial products and services in the province of Quebec. We regulate the, uh, the individual, the institutions, except for banks that are regulated federally. We also assist consumers of products and financial services uh, in the province. And we also educate people. Uh, we do a lot of awareness, uh, we do conferences, we do things on the internet. So we're pretty, uh, pretty uh, present all year round. Uh, reason I'm here, part of our educational miss, mission and the reason I'm here today with you guys is to give you the tools to prevent fraud and to make uh, suitable choices. Uh, people say that financial fraud only happens to other people. Sometimes it's like disease, but un unfortunately that is not the case. Uh, anybody can be fall victim to a financial fraud. Uh, some people think that you need to be rich to be uh, victims of fraud again. That is not the case. Some people, yes, some rich people, wealth, well-off people are victims of fraud, uh, but there are also some people uh, that, that are in very fragile financial situations that unfortunately also uh, become victims of fraud. They, we think that in average, uh, the Canadian fraud victim gets, you know, loses around $9,000 in a financial fraud. So a lot of some people just get fraud, defrauded maybe a few thousand dollars, a few hundred dollars, $100, dollars, but some people, it's a lot more, unfortunately. Um, Something I can tell you, I tell you we have a educational message, mission at the AMF. There is a uh, brochure you can download on the internet or that you can order to get a paper copy. Uh, you will see uh, our website address uh, at the end of this presentation. You can also write to me or Natalie to get it if it goes by too fast. 
Um, I'll leave my email at the end and you can also reach Natalie uh, easily at the Atwater Library. We'll both provide our emails at the end of the presentation. Some of the steps that are included in that brochure, there's a little more details in the brochure, uh, but I'll go quickly through them. First, first step to avoid fraud is to check that the person or firm offering you investments or insurance is registered to do so. It's not a foolproof method to avoid financial fraud, but I compare that as driving a car. If you wear a seatbelt, it's not foolproof that you may get injured, but the chances are you'll you will not be injured if you're into a collision. So same thing with financial fraud. If you're dealing with somebody that, are, that is registered, uh, see, there's more chance to avoid fraud and to have some recourse if something uh, ever happens. So a person that sells you insurance <clears throat> or investment products in the province of Quebec must be registered with the AMF and there's no way out of it. The only exception would be some people that work for banks or uh, Caisse Populaire that would sell you uh, GST and, uh, and other G, um, term deposits uh, and guaranteed investment, GICs. Uh, those are uh, risk-free products. So they can sell you those products without holding the license, but that's pretty much the only way to sell you investments without being registered. So always ask for registration and, or, and check if the person is registered. Don't just uh, uh, ex don't just believe off the bat that the person is registered. There's a way to check that. You can go on our, uh, the AMF's website and check if the individual or the firm is registered to sell you insurance or investments. If ever you're not comfortable uh, with the internet, you can always uh, call our information center. The phone number will appear at the end of the presentation. And again, you can get a hold of me or Natalie if you need that number again. And we have people at our information center that are fully bilingual that can help you out checking the, uh, the person's registration. Other steps to avoid fraud. Try, always try to get serious information about the financial product you're being offered. Uh, in some cases, our people in enforcement have seen that uh, fraud victims had very little paper trail of the transactions they did. Sometimes they paid cash. So it's very hard after that for our uh, enforcement people to follow up and try to catch uh, the scammer. Uh, beware if it seems too good to be true. I'm, I'm with you maybe 15, 20 minutes today. Uh, if there's a sentence you should remember, a message you should remember is to beware if it seems too good to be true. If it seems too good to be true, it usually is a scam, a fraud. Step four, beware of sweet talkers. Scammers have a, the particular ability. Uh, they have the ability usually to be sweet talkers. They raise it up to an, a heart, an art form of usually a scammer, uh, a good one in brackets, will be able to know what you want to hear and will use those words and use those messages to scam you. So be very aware, sweet talkers. Check for signs someone, someone is trying to scam you. You know, you've got that time, somebody's trying to propose you an investment, some sort of financial project. There's something, you know, you, you feel there's a little bit bell ringing, that's a little red light in your head saying something doesn't seem right, okay? Don't, don't only uh, be careful, even the person, if, if the person is well-dressed, if the person has a nice office, if the person has a ni really nice and look, professional look uh, website, okay? Uh, some fraudsters uh, dress very well, again, sweet talkers, so very, be very uh, careful. A, a sign that trying, another sign that people are, someone is trying to scam you is they, they'll say, oh, I've got, in the, I've invested all my money in that project. I've invested my mother's money, my grandparents' money. Those are usually signs that somebody is trying to scam you, so be on the lookout for that. Chai Chai. Signs, other signs you're being scammed, you're being promised high returns. And that usually comes with the next one, the next bullet. High returns guaranteed no risk. High returns guaranteed no risk. 
That combination, unfortunately, does not exist or else I would be already retired for a, lo a long time ago. Um, when you've got a, there's an investment and there's a potential high return, unfortunately, there's always a, pen, a very high risk. Uh, watch out if they're, they propose you a quick buck, easy money, that sign that you're being scammed, it's not, not so easy to make money. And so the sit did contact, let's say I'm a scammer, you don't know me, I contact you, uh, I'm proposing you those fabulous investments, fabulous products, uh, you don't know where I'm coming from, uh, I'm trying to make friends with you, so that should ring a few bells. A scammer will also usually an old trick is to have you make a really quick decision, I need a check today, I need to check tomorrow, I need 20, 48 hours, I need the payment for, in less than 48 hours or else the investment will be gone. Um, that is the, the trick here is that they want you to take a make a make a fake a make a on the spot decision so you won't make any research, you won't ask around if what I'm proposing makes sense. Uh, confidential, that's another trick from scammers. They'll they ask it, it to keep it secret, not to make it too public because it's a so-called investment is only for close friends or close new friends or a privileged few. So that's, uh, again, the person does not want you to talk about it around. And, and so people would say, you, a third party would say, well, that, that doesn't make, that investment does not make sense. Uh, scammers will also pretend that they have privileged information, especially in a crisis time like uh, we have actually. If I'm a scammer, I can come to you and say, look, I've got, uh, a hot tip on the stock, the company is coming up with uh, a vaccine, with some treatment, with medical um, equipment uh, in the, this uh, COVID situation. And uh, I, I'll, the scammer will tell you, you know, the shares will go uh, up really quickly. Uh, one, the information is usually fake. Two, even if I have that type of information, it's privileged information, it would be illegal for me to give you that information, okay? Another trick, the contrary, the flip side to being confidential, I can on the flip side ask you to, to recruit new friends, uh, promise you high returns, help you make your friends or become richer, give you a commission, okay? You invest with me, your friends invest with me, I run away, everybody's in big trouble, everybody's uh, losing money and you will probably lo lose those friends um, because you, you, you're you the one that uh, introduced us. COVID-19 related scams, uh, you know, we were sort of uh, keeping our distances, washing our hands, uh, but unfortunately uh, scammers will not handle your money with kid gloves. Um, if you have a chance, please visit our, uh, go on our YouTube channel. There's a video there about uh, COVID scam. There's three 15 second uh, videos that you may have seen on television or have seen elsewhere on uh, social media. So please take time to go see uh, that video. I've got here a few scams that me or some of my, my colleagues at the AMF uh, the scene in the past weeks. Uh, for a lot of phishing fraud attempts. What is phishing? Phishing is when somebody is trying to fish the information, your personal information out of you. You've got two cases here. On the uh, left side, you've got a uh, text from uh, somebody uh, talking about uh, Premier Trudeau's, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau's uh, approving a payment uh, for people that you that choose to stay at home during the, the the virus. Of course, they want you to click on a link to get that that payment to release the payment. But they will ask you for some personal information. A bit the same model on the right side, where you would have a a message uh, supposedly coming from the Red Cross uh to have some of those uh face masks that everybody's uh is requiring right now uh both of those messages were fake again with the one with the red cross you would click on the link and to have that to get that mask you went in to fill in your information 
what type of information are they uh, looking for? Your name, your address, date of birth, SIN, your PIN on your bank card, maybe your driver's permit, debit credit card, passport number, signature. They will ask you for all the information to release the payment or to send the max out. Of course, once you give them that information, they will use it um, and maybe get a credit card under your name, spend some other under your name, and eventually uh, you will, once your information is stolen and it's out there and you may, be, you may be losing some money and it's always trouble trying to fix that. So never click on those links. Do not click also on some of the attachments. You never know what's in these attachments. There can be some spyware. I do have a longer presentation uh, about uh, identity theft uh, that I've uh, I've done that conference at the Atwater Library, and if eventually maybe I can do that presentation again for you guys. So if ever you have special special demands, send an email to Natalie, and my friend Natalie will get back to me. Uh, Again, COVID-19 related scams don't answer a suspicious email and just junk them. Do not click hyperlinks. Again, they'll ask you for information. And after that, they'll tell you to the cleaners and hang up if you receive a suspicious call. Um, you can get calls from people saying that, well, they have a, a check for you. They have a um, hot tip for you. You, you. you just can hang up if you, you're not sure who to call comes from. Other related COVID-19 scams that we've seen, uh, investment companies claiming to offer products or services to prevent, detect, or treat the virus. There are some rumors flying around on the internet, on social media. Some of them are shell companies. Uh, the, the stock can appear to be maybe at one or two dollars and they uh, they will spread the rumor that the stock will go up because they have a vaccine, something like that. What would happen is you would invest in that stock, you would pay five, six dollars of it. After that, the fraud dumps the share, the rumors are false and what you acquired for five dollars uh, after a few days may only be worth a dime and a half. Okay, so there are no vaccines at this point, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully they'll find one soon, but be very careful with those investments coming from so-called pharmaceutical companies. Some of the rumors are fake. If ever you decide to invest in something, always do some serious research and uh, always double check and triple check. Uh, another type of fraud we have seen recently in our scams that you'll see on KGG, Facebook, Craigslist, and Job Seekers. Uh, sites. Uh, we've seen cases where they're, they offer some companies, known or unknown, are offering uh, um, payment manager positions uh, uh, from home. Of course, we're in a crisis. A lot of people are losing their jobs, are, are isolated at home, so it can be very appealing to apply on a uh, very well paid job that you can do from home with a computer. Unfortunately, those ads are fakes. The way they work, they work it out is that you would click on a link, you would apply, you would get a message a few hours, if not a few minutes later, saying that yes, that, that they are interested in your, um, in your profile and they would like to hire you. But even before um, ask, asking for an interview, they will ask you for personal information, maybe bank account number, social insurance number, all of those things even before. Uh, so hiring, hiring you. And the way it works is that they will, they will say that you're on a probation period and that, that they need to use your bank account for the transactions. So they say suppliers will be sending payments to your bank account and you need to send the pay some of that payment to another bank account and, and, keep, and keep a certain percentage as a, a commission. What will happen is you may receive a check. You'll put that check in your account, bank account. They'll ask you to send, let's say 95% of the funds to another account in Bitcoins. What happens a few days later, you get a phone call from your real financial institution saying that the check is bounced 
let's say the $9,500 that you sent elsewhere in Bitcoins, that is lost. The check is bounced, the bank will ask you for it. And uh, so, so the money's gone and the, the company does not exist. Even if they use the name of an existing company, you call HR and you later find out uh, that 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 they, they never posted that job. So be, be, be very careful. Those types of scams exist in regular times. The thing is now they're, they're using the crisis, the COVID-19, to tweak it up and to make it appear legitimate in, the, uh, in this time of crisis. So be very careful with the work from home scams that appear to be really well paid. Uh, COVID or not, be careful. Don't pay cash or make a personal check to a financial advisor. If I'm a financial advisor uh, you should, and I propose investments to you, I can, and if I'm uh, legit, I will ask you to make the check to the name of my financial institution I work for and not to my personal name. If somebody asks for a personal check, their personal name, be very careful. Also be extra careful if somebody is asking if you're investing and somebody asks your credit card number for the investment. That is a 99% sure sign of a fraud. Uh, avoid impulsive decisions. Always take time to invest. There's never an emergency to invest, especially when you're out of the RSP season. Um, always take the time, the investment, if, if it's legitimate, will be there in two, three, four, five days, and, and, and one month, two months, and so on. Ask, obtain information, real information, ask questions. Uh, always ask a, a third party, especially if you're not very familiar with the investments, it's always a good idea to ask opinion for, from a third party. Uh, check who you're doing business, business with. Again, uh, it's always uh, uh, useful to go on our website to check if the person registered or call if you're not uh, very comfy with the, uh, looking at the information online. And say no when it's too good to be true. You always have the liberty, liberty to say no. Uh, of course, we're not... I'm, uh, as you can see, I'm working from home. Uh, our offices are currently closed, probably for a few more weeks, but are, we're still working uh, and still in touch. So I left you, I've left you with my uh, email address. Uh, at the end, you'll also get Natalie's address. You can also follow the AMF on our uh, Facebook page, Les Bonnes Questions, or on Twitter. You have got our phone number toll free. Uh, number right there. If you're out of Montreal, we have a 514 number that uh, I think Natalie will be able to provide you with on the newsletter. And we have a website at leturity.qc.ca. So it's been a very, really pleasure for me to be with you at a distance. Uh, hopefully, this thing will uh, come to an end uh, and uh, that we'll be able to. Uh, uh, meet each other again physically at a closer distance uh, at the library in the very near future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us today. And again, you can, of course, contact him at michelle.garipi uh, at l'autorite.qc.qa. Uh, or, of course, you can just simply send in an email to me and I'll make sure that Michelle gets it. I just want to say thank you to l'autorité des marchés des financiers and of course to Michelle Garipi. I always say your name, <laughs> Garipi. Very close, good, it's very close, very good. Yes, <laughs> merci beaucoup for joining us merci. today. And of course, thank you to Canadian Heritage and uh, We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, stay in touch, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you all again very soon in our auditorium.